1954, the Victorian Railways proudly opened the electrification to Gippsland, the first mainline electrification in Australia. It was served by the L-Class locomotives and had numerous freight and passenger trains, till ultimately the demise of it began in 1987 with the closure of the electrification from Tarragon to Warrigal. This ultimately resulted in the last of the electrification that remains to Pakenham only being served by suburban trains. But today, let's think about whether it be possible to electrify regional rail lines again. So let's take a look at the benefits and the cons of constructing such a project. So let's take a look at some history. I've really briefly explained the history of the electrification to Gippsland, but basically in the early 1950s, the Victorian Railways proposed electrifying railway lines to Geelong and Sale. The first phase of the electrification saw the Gippsland line electrified from Dandenong to Tarragon at 1500 volt DC. Initially served by freight and passenger trains to the regional areas only, suburban trains began to continue to Pakenham in 1975. But further electrification stages never occurred. Geelong electrification didn't occur after it was found that mainline diesel locomotives could provide a good enough task and would be much cheaper than having to electrify the line. Electrifying to sail would also have basically no benefits for the Victorian railways. The coal traffic on the Gippsland line began to reduce in the 1970s and by the 1980s it was getting to non-existent. The need for expensive renewal of the overhead equipment ultimately killed the section beyond Warrigal which was removed in 1987. After that, the electrification to Warrigal was served by several spark trips from Melbourne a day, including a peak hour service from Warrigal to the city loop. However, ultimately this was decommissioned in 1998. The line to Bunyip remained electrified and was used for testing refurbished Comminge trains, but oh, finally in 2001, the last of electric train on the Gippsland line beyond Pakenham operated to Bunyip before being dismantled as part of the regional fast rail project. Despite this, I noticed on a recent trip to Gippsland that numerous overhead bases still remain along the line and some of the signals appear to be converted overhead stanchions. In the early 2000s, it was believed that as part of the regional fast rail project, despite the dismantling of the electrification to Gippsland, the line to Geelong would finally receive electrification. For this, new electric multiple units and it would be bought and it was believed the overhead would be powered at 1500 volt DC. The oh, electrification was ultimately cancelled, and so instead velocity trains were bought, which today served the Geelong line well. However, since then, there has been significant push to electrify the Geelong line and the Ballarat line. So Western Rail Plant currently includes electrification of the Ballarat and Geelong lines. Electrification would be go to Vaughan Ponds and Wenduri. For this, new regional electric trains would be bought, and they would serve these lines. Currently, the Geelong Fast Rail project is being planned. This in the first phase includes just quadruplication from Werribee to Laverton, but will also eventually include the electrification to Geelong. Hopefully in next year's election we get more details on what the government plans for the Ballarat and Geelong lines as well as the long overdue sparking to Melton. But before we continue, let's take a look at a neighbouring state which seems to like electrified regional rail more than V-Line in the 1980s, the New South Wales Intercity Train Link Network. Around the same time as the Gippsland line was electrified in the 1950s, the New South Wales Government Railways electrified the main western line to Lithgow from Parramatta and in fact all the way to Bowenfells with the intention to continue on even further. As well as that, the line to Gosford was electrified in the early 1960s. Plans for further electrification on the main north line ultimately resulted in Newcastle having an electric train service for the first time in 1984. And later, the South Coast line was progressively electrified, resulting in Kiama having electrification by 2003. Thus, New South Wales boasts a particularly large regional rail network that is electrified. From the beginning, there have also been dedicated EMTUs that for intercity services, namely the U-sets and later the V-sets, which were introduced in the 1970s and still provide services today on the electrified network, alongside Oscars and soon D-sets. Oscars being the H-sets, if you don't know what they are. However, New South Wales paid the price for its pioneering role as freight services have since ceased, mostly due to the fact that it takes a lot of time to switch over locomotives at the end of the network, which is relatively short in the scale of New South Wales railways, and 1500 volt DC has its limitations. However, it shows that had the commitment been made to electrify the Gippsland line, potentially we could still have regional electric trains there. Now let's take a return to Victoria. So what's the most likely option for electrification? Well, the most likely option for the near future would be to electrify the Geelong and Ballarat lines at 25,000 volts AC. If someday electrification could be warranted on the Bendigo line, then 25,000 volt AC should also be extended there. However, due to the isolation of the lines to Bansdale and Seymour and the probability that the Shepparton line will get standardised sometime in the future, 
If someday in the future electrification could be warranted to Bansdale and Seymour, then these lines would most likely be electrified at 1500 volt DC. Unfortunately, we are unlikely to see much regional electrification beyond the Geelong and Ballarat lines in Victoria due to the high cost and the only other line that kind of justifies it being the Bendigo line. Although interstate lines may someday be electrified at higher voltages, and perhaps I should do about that in the future, the Gippsland and Seymour broad gauge lines simply cannot justify the high cost of electrification. As well as that, electrification beyond Warren Ponds, Wenduri and Eagle Hawk is extremely unlikely due to again the high cost of electrification and the sparse population beyond these areas. Rolling stock for electrified lines would most likely be single deck EMUs capable of reaching 200 and potentially 225 km an hour. These trains would run on frequent and fast services to regional areas. One of the biggest advantages of electric trains is faster acceleration, so this in the higher top speed would enable significantly faster journey times. As well as that, some trains could potentially be built with capability of 300 km an hour running on high speed rail quality lines to Geelong and Ballarat if these were to be built in the future. I did record something on 1500 volt DC versus 25,000 volts AC, but I decided not to include that in this video because some of my information in there I've realised is false and so I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to do that in a future video, so expect another video on electrification sometime in the near future. So thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed my video on electrification in Victoria and the benefits of 25,000 volt AC electrification over 15,000 volt DC electrification. Hope you've enjoyed, subscribe if you did, thank you very much for 150 subscribers and 100 subscribers as well, really appreciate it.